So with all of that cool stuff that Suresh just talked about, ultimately what the customer's left with is a network that has, we've eliminated all that burden, we've deployed the network, and ultimately we're backing up with that guaranteed performance around coverage, availability, and capacity that Suresh talked about. We'll dig into that in a little bit more detail in the next section, in the next demo, but what I really want to show is all the control you have or our customers have around doing something with this network stack at this point. Right, you've got use cases, you've got users, you've got devices, you've got applications, you've got security requirements that ultimately we want to give you that full control to be able to deploy that on top of the network stack without bringing back in all of that complexity. So let's say for example, we want to go ahead and configure a new guest SSID since Suresh was just recently talked about you know, the guest network. The first thing we would do is come into the DHCP side of the house and set up one of two things either integration to a customer's existing DHCP server or servers, or into the Nile cloud DHCP server. Let's go through a scenario where we integrate with the customer's DHCP server. We click on this, we'd add in the DHCP server IP or IPs, geoscope of where that, uh, where that DHCP server is serving, and then any subnets that that DHCP server is supporting. Now, I think a question was asked before, I forget exactly who asked it, but this is where some of that one touch um, without all the multiple touches comes into play. As soon as we have that scope information and that DHCP server information, a bunch of things kick in behind the scenes by software. Inside the relevant Nile service blocks that associated to that geoscope, we autom the software takes this, automatically configures the normal stuff. The relevant IP interfaces, where they're supposed to be, the relevant IP helper addresses, where they're supposed to be, the relevant route redistribution up into your network through OS OSPF and how that's supposed to happen, as well as the synthetic tests that we're going to be running against those DHP servers from our physical and virtual sensors to check that, to ensure that they're available and they're supporting your users effectively. Right? All of that happens just by virtue of a customer coming in and telling us, hey, who's your, who's our, what's our DHP servers and what scopes they're supporting? Is there a question that was about to be asked? So that's the cloud DHCP server, right? Or is this, it, this is integration into customers' physical DHCP servers. Oh, okay, servers. gotcha. Yep. Make sense? Yeah. So let's say we're done with this piece at this point. The next step would be setting up the type of authentication we want. In this scenario, we're talking about guests, so maybe it's going to be email approval, maybe it's going to be click to accept. But as you can see, if you have an existing RADIUS server, like Free Radius, ICE, ClearPass, whatever it might be, we can tie into that existing ClearPass server or RADIUS server. Um, we won't click through that. Um, by the way, the other things get, that I talked about automatically get set up. If there was RADIUS, we would take that IP address and automatically add it to our bunch of synthetic tests that we do to ensure that we're checking that radius server to make sure it's providing it's available and providing the service. You do multiple at the same time. Yes. You got like ice cluster with like ten cluster nodes in it. Do we support ten cluster nodes? I think we do, right? I'm just if it's a uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Yep. Yes, absolutely. So, if I was setting up a you know click through for um guest. I would just come in here, set up my T's and C's. I think that was asked through before. Again, set up the geoscope that I want in this environment. The next thing I want to do is create a segment, a security container for these types of users. Think of this as a VLAN in the traditional world, a subnet or a security segment um, in some different constructs. We'd come in here, go ahead and create you know, the guest segment, name it, add it to a certain area, which building do I want this deploy in based on the site that I'm deploying at, what have you. I can select multiple if I want. I can deploy it everywhere. Here I might be just be doing it at San Jose. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to actually set up which um, type of authentication we're going to do to access that segment, which is click through. We're going to set up what DHCP server we're going to be supporting and what subnet we want to map users into that that DHCP server is supporting. And then we're going to go ahead and save that. Now that we have the DHCP server set up in the infrastructure, we've got the um, authentication type that we want, and we've got the segment, we're going to go set up the wireless SSID, set up a new guest SSID. You can see the different options here. We're not going to go through all the different options. It's all the ones that you would expect. We're going to go ahead and name the SSID and choose the type of security we want on this. Apply it to the segment that we just created. Go ahead and save this. And now we've got a guest SSID in the environments that we want this guest SSID to show up in with the type of authentication and the mapping to the subnets that we wanted. No configuration on any of those network elements at any of those sites. Now, you guys know this and Suresh kind of alluded to this, 
Job's not done if we're setting up this type of guest network. Once it gets out of our Nile service block into the rest of the customer network, they got to do something with that guest traffic. They still got to isolate it, segment, put it onto the DMZ, firewall it, NAT it, lo do logging, all that other stuff. The guest pop, which solves this solution for customers, is really easy to set up, and I'm going to invite my buddy Rashid up to kind of talk through that real quick. Awesome. Thank you, Austin. So whatever Austin showed until now, what if you simplify that with just one step? This is the Nile guest service, right? So in terms of DHCP servers, subnets, policy, segmentation, everything is taken care, care of by Nile. All the customer has to do is define the DNS servers, define terms and conditions, or sponsored email, however they, they want to authenticate, and define the wireless name, SSID name, and save it. That's pretty much it. Once we enable the guest service, all they need to do is define the name of the SSID and save it, and this will broadcast, and they, they don't have to worry about creating different policies, segmenting the traffic, everything is taken care of. So when I say we take care of the subnets as well, let me show you what I mean by that. Let me save this. Now, let's see, I've connected a client over here, and I'm going to search for POP in the client's details page. And if you see the IP addresses of these two devices, these are public IP addresses. So customer doesn't even need to actually carve out you know, different subnets from the private space for the guest users. We actually have public IP addresses, and we NAT the traffic out from the guest POP. So it's that simple. And with that said, I would actually like to invite all of you to connect to the guest pop SSID. We have the Nile uh, uh, network up and running. And the SSID name is Nile Demo Guest Pop. So all of you can actually connect to it right now. Yes, and if you, um, if you guys do connect to it, we've got a little bit of an interactive demo coming up in the next section. They were five minutes ahead of you because they found it and already started trying to connect to it. So <laughs> That's awesome.